What's up everyone? Today we're doing some backwater fishing. My dad just caught a solid mangrove snapper here and we're in a location that's got like a nice little channel and a channel that, a for, another channel that basically makes a fork and um, there's a lot of current ripping through here. It's the first spot of the morning, just back country today. Wanted to explore it. My dad's never really been back here and it's gorgeous. And um, today we just have the perfect conditions. We have current and the fish are right behind the boat right now. We've got chum out. Just cut a solid dinner fish, uh, mangrove snapper. Um, but we're gonna get back to fishing now because there is an insane amount of fish out there. You can show us. <laughs> Woo. All right, so we're just having a blast out here, catching a variety of different fish. And you know, this is a back country, so we are, it's pretty fairly shallow down here, and we are just in a deeper channel. And it's about 10 feet of water, the, but all around us is just the flats. But we've got an assortment of fish behind the boat with our chum, and the current's moving real good. There's a ton of ballyhoo, which is bait on the surface, and chubs, and mangrove snappers, and just everything working in our chum line. So cool. And um, we've just got flats on both sides of us. This is a little grunt. I'm gonna go ahead and release this little guy. But there is some quality fish here. We've caught like three or four keeper mutton, um, mangrove snappers already. But I know there's groupers here that you can keep and other fish too, but you just gotta weed out from the little fish. So we're putting on heavier jigs and heavier weights to get down a little deeper to catch these fish. All right, so as we're fishing here, we're actually gonna make a move here in a minute because we are just catching a lot of little fish. But remember those ballyhoo I said that were in our chum and they were kind of on the surface? Well, we use those for trolling offshore back home and um, they're pretty expensive when you buy them at the store. So I love getting fresh ballyhoo. That's amazing. So let me get this in the well. I just got a bunch. Beautiful ballyhoos. These are called forced ballyhoos because they're so big. Awesome. Now we got bait and we're going to freezer it up and free bait. Can't get better than that. So like I said before, we're going to go ahead and make our move basically because there's all these little fish to weed through and we're not getting to the the good fish and I, we know there's good fish around here legal uh, groupers that you can keep and big mangrove snappers and whatnot but also we're working with the full moon today is the full moon so a lot of these fish have fed overnight but uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull our anchor and then we're gonna kind of just explore and look at different areas and kind of figure out where we want to fish next Yeah. Shark. Shark. Big shark. Put it over here. Huge. Wait, we just got to a spot that's really cool in this area, and there's a ton of fish here. Big channel, they cut you off. Yeah, my dad just got cut off on a big barracuda, but we've seen schools of fish in here, um, and it's just really neat. The water's perfect. You can see through the water, and there's this big channel and a cut that goes right behind this island, and the water flows through here. I've already seen bull sharks, I mean, black tip sharks, lemon sharks, and a school of huge cuda, and I'm talking about two, three foot long cudas. So we're just trying to find more fish. I know that there could be snook and tarp in here, and maybe even redfish. So uh, we're gonna get on these fish now. Look at that big cooter just chilling. Oh, we got a shark on! Having fun now! You're in the fish! Woo! How's that drag sound? Get in that sizzle. Is he gonna spool us? That's 100 yards, a uh, uh, yellow tough line on top, 50 pound. And I put a, just put a fish head. He's actually on a, mono, a heavy mono leader. You guys know we like these heavy mono leaders for smaller sharks. And it's a 400 pound. So we'll see, he could bite through it, but then he'll get a good release. Turn him. Turn him. 
He's running for a touchdown. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> he just broke off. He must be miles away. I think he probably went around. There's a branch out there. He might have went around. Yeah. See how much braid I can get back. All right, we got the bait on here. Still weird. Let's see what's going on. Everything here. So probably a ray. They're super powerful. I mean, that was not a four or five foot shark, which you normally see around here. Um, but a ray would suck, take it in and then spit it out. So nice clean bait. Got my hook. Uh, I think I'm just gonna cast it back out and catch another, <laughs> catch another one. And that's a blue runner head. That's a blue runner head, and we got a got a mustad uh, J hook here, three times strong. And I'll show you how I'm gonna hook it. I'm gonna show you real quick. See, I got some stuff on the hook here. Now, I don't want that on there. So you gotta get that off. You don't want anything like when you hook a fish new, and maybe a scale comes off. You know, like even a live bait and a scale comes off on that point. You gotta make sure you clean that point off because that's what, you know that's what you're penetrating the lip of that fish with. Yes, yeah, so, you know, so you don't want any stuff covering the hook. I mean, it makes, that's common sense, but just, you know, these are kind of details which are going to stop you from, from catching fish. All right, so I got the hook nice and clean, and I'm going to put it in the strong, like a strong part of the fish and have the hook tip exposed. I mean, it's not, you know, just sharks, it's not really brain surgery. You see my lead is all frayed up. It's 400 pounds, I don't care. I'm going to throw it back out there. Drag was pretty, pretty tight. So that was probably a huge ray, which I was afraid of, but whatever. Let's have some more fun. <laughs> That's a fish. He's jerking. Yeah. Get him, boy. Oh, he's going to the mangroves. Yep, headed right for the mangroves. Ah! Yeah, Tighten up a little bit. Hey, guys. Got another fish on. Hopefully it's an. If it stays on. It's something a little bit more manageable than the other one. Did you see him splash back there? Yeah. Like, oh, he's around that corner. I see him. I think I see him. No. I think you're getting him out. Get this on braid, so it should be okay. You're getting line on him. There he is. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Nice shot. All right. Got him out of the mangroves. Shaking his head. I see him. Yeah. Nice shark. Little medium sized shark. Now, the deal is, I would reel it this time. That's why I'm reeling. And Darcy is going to wrangle him and lead him and get the hook out. Oh, bicep already hurts. Yeah, it's hard work reeling really, those damn sharks. Oh, you better get your gloves on here. All right, he's gonna take off again. Don't worry. He sees a boat. He's gonna run. He's not ready yet. He's a decent shark. Wow. All right, so again, we got a 400-pound mono leader. So he could chew through it, but we got a nice little shark here. So you need those gloves, baby. Look, he's got another hook in the corner of his mouth here. Check it out. See. If he got broken off by someone else as well, but the shark hook got perfectly in the corner of his mouth. This is a beautiful lemon shark. He's big. He's six, seven foot big. I don't like being so close to his face like this. He could easily uh, flip. But I don't have long bolt cutters to bolt to actually cut the hook, and I'm not going to take my pliers by his, hand, his mouth right there and cut the hook either. Um, it's just too risky. I'm not going to lose my hand. So I'm just going to cut this. Should be good. Released. Nice. Brian fought the shark. I wasn't about that today. I didn't want to fight a shark. But he just swam off no problem and uh, cut the hook. And I mean, cut the, the leader. And the hook should end up getting um, like rusting out and falling out of the hook, out of, out of the shark. Awesome. We just unanchored just now because Brian's done catching the shark. Um, so we decided to just go on the edge of the mangroves, which were right next to us the whole time. We just really couldn't cast to it. Doing the same method like before, we're just using the same little jigs, little yellowtail jigs, live shrimp, and just kind of pitch it underneath the mangroves here, trying to get a snook or a redfish or anything under the mangroves. But it's beautiful, flat calm, you can see the bottom, super clear water, and just amazing assortments of fish. And I just saw a school of like 10 like little tiny squids, it was so cool. But there's so much life here, it's just, the Florida Keys is amazing.
All right, so my dad just brought another species into the boat. Brian's been trying to catch this all day, a cuda, and we just caught it on a piece of chunk bait. So that's pretty cool. It's a little on the small side, but this is a perfect swordfish bait. This is the kind of size you would use for swordfish. Um, rig up a swordfish bait. Cool. A little yellowtail jig right in the corner and didn't break them off. Oh yeah. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. And I got my bait back. We were looking for the big boys. The big boys were all over the boat, like swimming. Oh, it was a big shark swimming around the boat, and we just couldn't get them to eat. But uh, we got a little guy on mono fluorocarbon. Should I keep him for Kevin or throw him back? Throw him back. Here we go, flying fish. cool little fish too. This is a horse eye jack and we don't really see these back home too often. The jack crevals that we catch are slightly different but this is a horse eye jack and as soon as he calms down I'm going to show you why he's a horse eye jack. Ow. Really? Alright so the way because he's different he looks almost exactly like a jack crevall except his tail is slightly different. It's more that's it's a... shaped a little thinner. Ooh, that's a keeper. Throw him in the boat. Snipe him in. Nice job. Dad just got a ma another mangrove snapper and his eyes are shaped a little different and this back tail part totally different than a jack creval that we would catch. And jacks are more jack crevals are more yellow in their body and the he's not. So I'm gonna go ahead and release some because there's a ton of horse eye jacks down here. And uh, my dad just caught a solid mangrove. You gotta show that to them. Nice. That's a solid fish. What are you doing, Susan? What does it look like? It looks like you're in the weeds. What are you doing today? Shut up. Talking to me? Talk no. To, talk to the viewers, not me. Frustrating because I'm catching trees. But I guess if you're catching trees, you're doing something right. So, back us out. Wrapping up our fishing trip and we're almost back to the house, but we had a superb day of fishing in the back country. Just truly incredible out there. And what do you call it? He kept saying it's God's country. It's and it, God's country, absolutely. It truly is. It's just an untouched piece of, you know, water and land and mangroves that nobody has ever been out, you know, nobody has like overpopulized it or humanized it. It's just like you're one with the earth. It's really cool and uh, so many, so much life, so many different things we saw out there and even though we didn't catch that many fish, a lot of little fish, but just amazing to see the sharks and the rays and the tarpon. My dad saw turtles. a free jumping tarpon, huge turtles, just amazing. And uh, this is my dad, dad's last day in the Florida Keys, so he got to experience the how it is for the, the people that live down here too. It's just amazing. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you subscribe to the channel and big thank you to Landshark Logger for, for sponsoring this trip. It's been an epic trip so far and we're not done yet. So um, thank you Landshark and until our next adventure, follow, follow your dreams, dreams and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. <laughs>